today is uh, get this thing ready to shoot. It's brand new. It's a model 1851 Colt Navy uh, made by uh, Uberti. It's uh, 36 caliber black powder uh, cap and ball revolver as you can probably see. And uh, when they come they're I've, I've wiped it down already but when they when they get to your door they're they're pretty slimy gun course which is good keeps them from rusting and storage and shipping so what I'm gonna do is a quick video on uh, getting this thing cleaned up and prepped up for uh, for firing at least the way I do it anyway and uh, I'm using this method because I, I don't know I just see people having trouble firing these things on on uh, YouTube so I've uh, come up with a between listening to uh, guys that have been shooting them forever and guys that do the cowboy shoots and a few quirky ideas I came up with my own that worked very well I figured I'll just stick them on on the uh, website as I prepare this thing for firing with black powder so I'll put her on the stand and we'll get going okay imagine you uh, Americans watching this are going to shake your head but even on the storage in the locked cabinet unless you have a real gun safe designed specifically for guns. You gotta have a trigger lock on them. Even a cap and ball. We're hoping with the uh, government change some of the silliness. It sounds like they're gonna get rid of some of the silliness like the long gun registry and all that. So you see better. Anyway, I'll take her back to half cock. Look down the barrel, the cylinders, there's nothing in her. No caps anyway, but still. See this one. She's brand new. Say so she's got all the oil and stuff still on her. First thing I'm gonna do is uh, break her down. Easiest way is uh, you gotta get this wedge out. Just got a wedge in here. I'll knock that out and we'll be able to get the barrel off. Use a nice soft hammer for that. She's slimy, this one. Now the screw doesn't have the flat on it, so... They're new, they're kind of funny like that. And uh, use the loading lever. Pull her back and get the cylinder so that the uh, loading ram is uh, resting between the chambers. Give her a little push, she slides right, slides right off just like that. And so is the cylinder. So you're going to have to reposition that camera. And she's got tons of oil. I'm not going to split it right down. I'm just going to clean all the petroleum oil off this, wipe it off first. And I'll probably use a Cleaner or something. Or actually, I'll just use the lube. Wonder lube is what I've been using. Works works really good. I'll take the loading ram out. I bought this screwdriver. It's a gunsmith screwdriver. It's only a cheapy set, but these tips, as you if you can see that, you'll notice that the uh, the flats come straight down. You don't have the taper like you would with this screwdriver, which gives you a nice cam action which gives you all those bubba screws you see on guns. So if you use a, a screwdriver set, and they're well worth the money. They're de designed specifically for uh, firearms. You'll see that the tip is really nice when you put the... and they fit the screws very well. And when you put them in the, in the screws, they slide right in. Even if they're tight, they don't try to cam out of there. And when they cam out of there, that's... that's when the ugly start. You get those not so pretty screws and you can see what I mean by all the, the slime they get on these things to, to preserve them during shipping and storage which is good yeah. and they've all been fired they have to be fired at the factory and they just slime them up and away they go in the box I get out my uh, cleaning rope and stuff and I uh, ran a patch to the barrel already 
and you get that brown <clears throat> excuse me you get that brown residue that's not rust it's uh, just uh, the combination of when they fired it plus the, the oil they slobbed all over it so uh, you don't have to worry about that the uh, barrel in this one was uh, pretty pretty wet actually the these blue towels you get at Canadian Tire and whatnot, Walmart and those places are great for doing stuff like this. They're tough and they, they don't they're they're lint free, so they're designed for doing mechanical work. And uh, they're ideal for de sliming your new uh, cap and ball revolver. Now get as much off as I can this way. I don't wanna make this video too long and painful. Yeah, I took the loading ram off the lever. I'm just wiping this stuff out to get the the bulk of it. Cause even even in the loading ram it'll it'll start piling up in here. It'll plug you up pretty good. Wedge, get that all de slimed. Right down to the screws. Now I find the uh, 45 caliber Jaguar. Jag works good on these uh, little finger poker for cleaning out the center of the cylinder. That's quite a bit, eh? And uh, you, I used to use grease. Uh, they tell you to use some kind of grease for lubricating this, but like this, you get that powder, black powder residue in here, and boy, she gums up and tightens up right now. Two, three cylinder loads, you're done. So I started using the, like I mentioned in the pre previous video, this stuff here. It's just a, a thread and nipple grease for the threads and stuff and it works really really well it uh, goes a lot longer before it starts to tighten up when it does you can put a like I mentioned in my uh, 1860 video uh, while you're going along you put a drop or two in here while you're shooting of course the barrel would be on and this thing just stays loose for the day and I still run a brush through the barrel every now and then. It doesn't get too tight. Looks like a four way. More ways than one for your car. It's even got the flat blade on the end. That's a nipple, multi size nipple wrench with a flat blade driver, which I don't use as long as you can see the corners are round and all that. It's got quite a taper on it. So, good way to wreck screws. Um, what I ended up doing with this, the work, is I put it, uh, the work good. I know some nipples and different guns are a little long and would kind of hang up. So I went in there to drill, and I drilled that hole in there a little deeper. And I found now that I, because I was taking the corners off some of the nipples, because it didn't quite fit all the way down, especially on my walker. So this goes right to the bottom and pop those, those nipples out. It even works like a four-way for your car here. I don't know if cars use four-ways anymore. Probably not so much now. Okay, again, I'm just getting the... I say getting the it looks like rust in here, but it's not. Let's see, she's kind of cootie looking there. Let's get all that excess shit out of there. I guess you could go at it with a can of... Uh, brake clean or something. If you if you'd go that route, I'd recommend using uh, the uh, alcohol based stuff because you get that powdery residue from the uh, normal brake cleans. I'm pretty sure that stuff's not all that good for you to be snorting that in. You wouldn't want to spray it in the house, that's for sure. Unless you really don't like your wife. Uh, She's gonna get in your face with that smell. 
And you could probably blow it all clean with the compressed air, but I don't know. I kind of find the quick and easy is not always the best way. And you get to get a good look at your your revolver this way. Q-tips. Got to have these if you're going to mess around with black powder. Get in around where the nipples are there. You think you got it out the first time? I guess again. And uh, there's a little bit of that brown stuff in there. Get it all out. Get the patch and clean and get in everywhere. It'll just amaze you if once you get on to around a hundred rounds wear that uh, nice thick crappy residue will build up. And this is one of the places in your loading ram. nice and clean and the biggest reason I'm doing this video is just trying to share things that made my life a lot easier and makes shooting a lot more enjoyable with these cap and ball revolvers that's why when I do something like this I notice YouTube has that new share option where you allow people to I don't know what you call the share option. I forget exactly what it's called. And uh, allows uh, people to download and use your videos, which I have no problem with with this stuff. It's going to help somebody out go for it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to finish cleaning my nipples, and uh, instead of babbling on, I'll uh, get back to you when I'm ready to put it back together. I also like to mention, like I go in here with the Q-tip get in the back of the cylinder around where the nipple goes in there. I get everything a nice coat of this stuff. If I'm going to store it, I'll probably for the winter I'll probably just leave it that way. But if I'm going to go shooting I'll go over it again just to, to get up the excess out of there. Now, if you got that stuff, even the cylinder itself, you got that stuff slobbed in there a little too heavy, which is fine initially. But you're going to go shooting, it might cause you a lot of grief. It's too wet in there with the, the lube, so I'll just give her a chase with the patch. Flip them around here. Get the dry side. Do three in one side, three in the other. And uh, get the excess out of there. You don't want your powder getting wet with this stuff. looks reasonable got a nice film in there and at the same time it's got a not too much so that's going to interfere with your charge okay you got the uh, nipples all cleaned up so I'm going to put them back on and that's what the real purpose of this stuff is is put them on the threads and you don't have to worry about these uh, little guys seizing up in there um, some folks may or may not strip them down after the every use. Like I'm going to go out and fire it once, or use it like not just fire it once, go out and uh, spend a day at the range with it. And when I come back I'll strip the whole revolver down. You might want to get a gunsmith to do that for you at the end of the season if you have a season. We certainly do here in Canada because the indoor ranges for some reason frown on that big plume of smoke you leave lingering down their, their gun range but uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's the way it is here in Canada so pretty much when you're hitting minus 30 minus 40 you don't much feel like uh, hand loading one of these things little or even a cartridge uh, gun for that matter get them nipples in there snug but I wouldn't. I don't have to get them in there screaming tight. You'll end up just camming your wrench and 
taking the corners off the off the nipple anyway. They're just a two-sided flat. I'll get that done and take the next step. Yeah, I'm gonna bring this up too because I just cammed one of my. Uh, I think a fellow should try to. You know, I haven't been able to find one, but a really good uh, nipple wrench. As you can see, I just ground these down a bit on a, on a disc sand sander. I got one that's on a uh, on the tabletop there, so it allows me to get it nice and square. The edges were nice, were rounded, and the, the flat was rounded. And I was just tightening. I didn't put much pressure on, but when I went to tighten it, it cammed up, and of course, took rounded one of the corners off, and uh, that kind of pissed me off. So I flattened her out, nice sharp edges, nice and flat here, nice and sharp corners there. And it's biting on that thing, full contact on the nipple, which is what you want. And uh, this thing's not going to cam anymore. These are, it's hard to get a really good one. This one's pretty good, but you know, if you buy one, drill it in so you can get the whole nipple in there. It's not hard to do with a drill press, and uh, take uh, take off just enough here to allow this to be flat and get those rounded corners off. As you can see it here, uh, the way that's set up like that. It's pretty much the, just one step above useless like that. All you're doing is wrecking the nipples. Because uh, this, this wrench is designed for the for, for rifles, uh, revolvers, and three different size nipples for your uh, for your musket size there as well. A little little lesson learned from me. Save you from doing that. Maybe I'm too fussy, but you know, this is gonna work much better. Okay, one more lube patch through there and we'll put the cylinder back on. I like to go out and shoot today, but I gotta work tonight. You can have hobbies like this, you gotta work. Unless you got a damn good welfare plan. Personally, I got no use for that, but get it in on the. There. That's good. Now I'm going to use this, this stuff here. And I'm going to get it into those uh, lub lubrication grooves that are right, that's in here. Now I went over that with a patch soaked in the uh, Wonder Lube. And that removes, does a real good job actually of removing the, uh, the, all the oil. And this stuff is going to be a lot more resistant to the fouling, as I mentioned. Go get a Q-tip worth. Get it in here too, because this is another spot on the revolver you'll find that the fouling likes likes to build up is right in here. Get it right in there, clean that up too. As you know, when you push these on, they'll pile the stuff up here, it'll actually strip some of the lube off, so I'll just get some in there. She'll push that through. Get some on the ratchet gear there. There. Good to go. And I made sure all the, the nipples are cleaned out on the inside. There. Barrel a quick wipe. And I'll reassemble the uh, the loading lever and ram assembly, ram rod assembly. This has all been cleaned off, and it's got you can see it's kind of oily looking, but it's from this stuff. So, put 
the same stuff on the loading ram. I'll try to find some more of this stuff. It seems to be uh, a little bit tricky to find it. Here's a screw you do not want to over tighten. You strip that one, you're pretty much buying a new lever. You don't really have enough uh, room on that to do much for repairs. If it's in there snug, that's good enough. little tweak is all you need to tighten that up and uh, you know you go too hard at it you're gonna have all these bubbled screws so you don't want that Sure, your <laughs> cylinder doesn't come screaming off the gun when you go to put your barrel back on. There you have it. Put the wedge back in her. It's always tougher on these brand new guns than it is on the ones that's got to have have a little experience, of course. This one uh, is the most stubborn one I've had yet. We'd have to put a little taper on that. I think all I'll do is take the screw out a bit. No sense wrecking and marring everything. These screwdrivers are magnetic, by the way. This is good. There. Once it has a little more experience, that thing will come in and out of there, no problem. I always put up a little bit of a fight, but you, know, you don't want to cock eye that screw, so I'll just take that out a little farther so the screw fits down inside here a little better. Straight on. Very light brush with the fingers. If it doesn't want to go, it won't. Of course, once you're started, you're good. Not fitting in there, so screwdriver blade. We'll get a thinner one. And we won't have any bubble screws. There we go. Good enough. Give her a final wipe. And a Q tip. Down in here just to get the excess exit uh, the excess oil out from, from the factory. Oops. That's something else you don't want to do with a cap and bowl is dry fire. I've had one I had to replace uh, you know, you can get away with it once or twice, but I had to replace all the nipples and I had to replace the hammer. Because, I don't know, the gun had been dry fired a lot. It pounded a big ring into, actually I think we still have it here. Found it. This is off my Rogers and Spencer 44. I don't know if you can see that. They hammered a ring right into the, and this is after cleaning it up. I fired it like this, but it wasn't working all that great. Um, that's why you don't dry fire these things. This uh, revolver had been bubbled real bad. I ended up changing the cylinder because they put nipples in it that were the wrong thread. Somebody 
bell mouth the uh, tapered the uh, front of the cylinders on it. So I end up I bought it used obviously and uh, new cylinder, new hammer. Of course, cylinder came with nipples. I always buy a couple extra and a uh, little TLC and some new screws and stuff. It's a it's a real nice nice revolver now, but this is what happens. Yeah, there's no no real need of that. That's one sexy looking revolver. They're beautiful guns. Maybe the Remington was more functional, but, but some of the, like if you look at my 1860 video, uh, 1860 Colt video, those tricks that I've been taught and that I've come up with on my own, um, these things you can blast away all day. No hang ups. And when you're firing the gun, <laughs> I, don't, I know the thing's empty, it's just a little unsettling, kind of pointing like that, even though it's only a camera. When you're firing the gun, you fire it, when you cock it the second time, tip to your revolver to the side, and the cap will fall free instead of falling down inside your uh, mechanism and jamming everything up. And very, very, very seldom do I have hang-ups using that method. Alrighty, hands up. So there we have it, one cleaned 1851 36 caliber Colt Navy, uh, all ready for the range. Uh, I gotta work tonight so that isn't gonna happen today. But uh, anyway this is uh, what I found works very well for me to keep the fouling problems you get, get associated with these revolvers down to a bare minimum. and. Uh, you can uh, take a bottle of that uh, lube or any patch lube um, and uh, as soon as your cylinder or even between sh loadings put a drop preferably after you load because before you load you might get some lube down inside the, cylinder, the chamber there in the cylinder and that could mess up your charge so once you load it do not put the caps on once you get the cylinders loaded you can put a drop a little brain in here and uh, that softens up the fouling get it right in there the camera didn't like that it uh, keeps the fouling soft enough your cylinder rotate nice and free and uh, she's ready to go not a whole lot to it um, taking the nipples out and, and putting the anti or putting the wonder lube or any of those anti C's with the uh, nipple greases and stuff work great Tell them, trust me, it'll save you a lot of grief later on. Hope you enjoy it, the video, and uh, pretty soon here I'll, uh, I'll uh, have this sucker out uh, pounding lead down the range. Might even try this at 100 yards just for, just for giggles. But uh, anyway, I hope you found it useful, if anybody watches it. <laughs> and uh, and uh, shoot safe, enjoy yourself.